Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're hailing from. Welcome to the world premiere of the GetOps Happy Hour with the one and only GetOps extraordinaire, Christian Hernandez. Christian, please introduce yourself for everybody on the channel today. Let yeah, know so what we're about um, to dive into. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, my name is Christian Hernandez. I'm a single uh, senior now, principal technical marketing manager. Yes, you are. Uh, at Red Hat, right? And a um, uh, little bit background about me, right? So, as, as we start this, uh, this new, uh, this new um, biweekly, I guess, uh, stream. Mm -hmm. um, my background is mostly in operations, right? Um, but I think I've delved into, I think as as everyone into into DevOps, um, and always trying to find new and interesting ways to um, speed up the delivery of applications, right? Even as an operations guy, that's kind of kind of your job, right? You, you you like to think your job is spinning up VMs. It's, it's not. It's to support. Your job is to support the developers, and if the 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 quicker you realize that, the better it'll be for your for your career, right? So, um, you know, I, I had to have that. Um, and um, I was actually one of the two first OpenShift SAs. So I'm talking, this is back in 2014, wow. right? Back when OpenShift was, uh, back when no one, Kubernetes didn't even exist, right? So they, it only existed yeah, as, no, as, yeah. as a concept inside of Google, right? Um, right. You know, based off on, on Borg and all those, you, everyone should know that story. So, um um, so, but one of my biggest passions, as as uh, most of you would know, as Chris yeah. would know, is, yeah. is GitOps, right? So, what what is, and um, what I want to do with this uh, with this happy hour? Oh, and by the way, it is it is a uh, is technically happy hour, right? So I have. Um, I mean, it's five o'clock somewhere. It's yeah. five o'clock somewhere, right? So I have um, <laughs> I have I have a cold beverage here. I hope I hope everyone else does as well because I'm going to treat this as a um, even though it's a happy. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You got Coke. Right. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want to drink, whatever, whatever your fancy you want. is. It doesn't matter. Um, um, you know, I want to treat this as a as an office hour. It's kind of similar to those of you who watch the level up hour or mm -hmm. the uh, the admin office hour um, with uh, my my coworkers actually, right? Langdon and Andrew do the, do that show. Um, yeah. I want to treat it as something similar, but since everyone's doing office hours, I just decided to name it a happy hour, just just to be a little different, right? I always have to be. Well, let's be honest, right? Like yeah. you're West Coast, so it was like. Mm, I need to do it in the afternoon. And it was mm -hmm. like, well, let's call it a happy hour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? I mean, it made hour. sense, right? Like, it made sense, yeah. It's like three or four in the East Coast, right? It's, yeah. uh, it's you know, 9, 9 p.m. I mean, um, it's Thursday, Europe, right? So. Like, Thursday's the normal, like, college party night anyway. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no one really right? works on Friday, right? Dude, this is, <laughs> 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 let's, let's, let's be serious about that. No right? one, <laughs> you got the ops freeze Friday, yeah. So, yes, exactly. Know. Yeah, if you're in operations, you're not pushing any changes on Friday, right? So, you know, Thursday, Thursday nights are right. Um, <laughs> if you build the environment right, you can, but. Yeah, you can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe this is, yeah, this is a good segue, right, to what we're right. going to be talking about. Exactly. Right? Is, um, yeah, so this, this, this first, I think this first episode of um, the GitOps Happy Hour, um, I kind of want to talk about kind of demystifying GitOps, right? So some of my previous streams, you see, um, I think a, a lot of what we do in technology, right? I don't want to like put this on like any one company or any one group of people or anything. We just just in general, we focus on the hammer is what I like to say, right? We focus on the tool yeah. a little bit, a little bit too much, right? Right. Um, and I always, I always make the analogy of building a house, right? When you build a house, the first thing you, the first thing you talk about is like the blueprints and how you're going to build the house, not what brand of hammer you're going to use, right? Although the, <laughs> although the tool is important, um, you're, it's, it's always you're using the right tool for the job. So I think I want to take a step back and kind of demystify GetOps, kind of independently of the tool of what what we use right as as you know um i use a lot of argo cd um some of my uh, you've seen some streams here people using acm some people uh, yeah. there's some people using uh, ansible i, I think we i want to step back and really focus on what and not uh what they're doing versus not with you the know process the tool. Not yeah the tool. yeah exactly. yeah yeah exactly it's this this that's not uh focus on the tool so what what is what is getops exactly right and i, I think chris uh, you've seen the slide before. Oh yeah, right. So, um, <laughs> Chris, Chris always always gets uh, a, a good a good laugh out that that, that I always quote him here. But um, yeah, the, what, to, what is? To be, yeah, to be fair, I said that. When did I say that? May of 2018. Yeah, yeah, May of 2018. So yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so you, you, you've uh, um, uh, and and I think it's a it's a very good it's a very good quote, right? Like so, I'm, I'm quoting directly quoting the person here. Um, GitOps is the holy grail of DevOps, right? So what, what is, um, 
you know, what, what does that mean, right? So GitOps is just very simply using Git as your source of truth for your entire stack, right? So yeah. not only your, um, your application stack and how that looks like, but you're actually your infrastructure as well, right? So as things like infrastructure as code comes along, right? Like things like uh, Puppet and Ansible, when you're like describing your infrastructure um, in a in a code-like manner, right? Declarative state is what in I In a declarative it. state, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. When you're declaring, right? Declarative instead of imperative, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can store that somewhere, right? And yeah. using the GitOps workflow, using Git as a source of truth, that's what really what GitOps is, right? You're driving everything through Git. Um, you know, it's, it's, taking, it's taking what the developer's done, really, right. what the developer's done with Git, kind of just moving that to operations as well. Yeah. And Git can be, you know, kind of intimidating for ops people, but it, it has kind of become the de facto version control software for like everything nowadays. Oh, definitely. Right? Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and don't get me wrong, like Git can be intimidating and you can get into the weeds with Git, but there's desktop tools. There's all yes, kinds yes, of tools yes, exactly. to make the yeah. Git experience easier for you. So don't fear the Git Reaper, right? Like, yeah, don't feel you can yeah, get over exactly. this. <laughs> don't fe don't fear the Git Reaper. I, you know what? I think I'm going to put that in a quote on another slide. Um, <laughs> Next episode. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next episode, I'm going to have that. Don't fear the Git the Git Reaper. Oh man, I'm going to have to remember that because I'm, I'm actually going to use that because the the next episode is I think will. Um, will fit perfect with that. Um, perfect. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it, it's also the natural um, evolution yeah, right, of DevOps. Totally. So it's, it's, it's really um, a uh, GitOps is like cloud native and DevOps in practice, right? So it's, it's not, it's, um, it's just a natural way of doing DevOps, right? Like if, if that's what you want to get to, um, that's what it is, right? So just simply everything you have, everything about your environment, if your infrastructure, is in Git, simply, right? So yeah, um, yeah. So there's a there's always these um, here. Let me let me make this a little bigger here. Um, oh, thank you. There's always the um, you know what do I gain, right? Like why why get ops, right? So like if you ask you know the get ops community and people that 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 have been doing this, like there's like um, you know everyone's shouting pretty much the, s the same things, right? Right, right? like. Like I want to do give up, get ops because, you know, it just takes weeks and months for vision and environment or like there's people that say um, like I can't audit, like I can't audit configuration changes. Right. So you get like these um, different people from different um, uh, different environments. Right. So like from the security guys to the administrators to the developers, they're all like shouting, you know, things. Right. Like that is pain points for them. And the the good news is that GitOps kind of provides probably a little bit of everything for everyone, right? Like it, it really, I don't want to say it's like um, uh, the perfect answer for all, all workloads, but it, it actually attacks a lot of pain points for a lot yeah. of, um, for a lot of, uh, for a lot of people. Right. So um, really just kind of like the, like the benefits, the biggest benefits um, they need to keep in mind, like, well, what, what, what would GitOps get me? Right. So like, all changes are audible, right? So like you, since you're using a Git workflow, so like, you know, kind of giving away the secret that developers have been known for a long time to kind of the, the operations guys that I can see, I can see who made changes, what and why, right? Just because in that Git workflow, I can look, I can look at the specific commit. I can see who did it and I can see who approved it. And I can see, you know, and all of a sudden now I have this big audit trail of, of my um of my entire environment right yeah. so security guys come and say and hey, it's hash you... too right it's like hash. It's... Yeah, yeah exactly yeah <laughs> it's, it's all in get you, you get all the benefits to get right like you, you you go to your security guy and say hey I, um security guy comes and says i'm, I'm you know we're going to do an audit and you go all right here here's the entire you know git log enter <laughs> you know here's the, everything that's happened in this environment and who's done it and who's done it yeah and, and a who, unique yeah. hash for each time. So you have like a, you can almost blockchain it if you really want yeah, to, yeah, right? Exactly, like somehow, yeah. right? Like, I mean, you could get nuts with it. But yeah, like you've got this, you know, fully detailed log, if you're doing it right, of yes, everything that's exactly. happening in your environment. Everything, everything in your environment, right? So mm. 
Um, and you also get, um, you know, not to mince words, right? Not, not to play on words, but you get a standard um, roll forward and backwards, right? Instead of failures, if something bad happened, I can point to a different tag and then your environment just kind of just changes to that tag, right? It'll roll back um, to, a, uh, to a different commit um, and it'll, it'll, it'll um, make sure you're at um, uh, in that specific commit, right? So that's what essentially what GitOps, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain a little bit how that happens, but you can roll forward and backwards just like as you would get, you can go back a tag, um, you can go to a specific branch, you can do, you know, whatever. You could cut releases of your uh, infrastructure, yes. which is like wild to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. your entire infrastructure, like we're gonna have like this, we're gonna cut this version, you know, like you're now like my, all my servers and everything are like specific versions of our right. like entire right. infrastructure. Like, yeah, like you're cutting releases essentially of your, yeah. of your infrastructure. You know, um, the, these systems are at version 1.3, these systems are at version 1.4 yeah. and we're doing our blue green deployment right now, right? Yeah, like that's exactly. how I look at it, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then that's and then the entire stack, right? Not just like mm -hmm. the applications, not just they, just like essentially it's, the entire stack. It's the whole, it's to, from the metal all the way up, right? Yep, like. <laughs> from the metal up, yeah, exactly. So you have also a um, a method to do disaster recovery, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a method of saying, okay, well, if I lose everything, how do I get to where I was? I was like, well, everything's conveniently in Git. I just reapply to the current state, right? And, um, and the experience really is, um, for, for developers, it'll be, um, it'll be just standard pushes and pull requests. Right. So right. forks, you know, I, um, as a, uh, even as an operations guy, right. I can fork a repo, you know, say, Hey, I want, you know, four nodes instead of three, make a pull request it's really easy. That get, that goes through the process, right. That right. goes through it. Somebody's uh, got to approve that. Somebody's someone's got to approve yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. So then that's the experience, like how you interact with um, your cluster is all consistent. Like everyone yeah. interacts with the cluster. Like Ops, it creates a level of consistency that is hard to achieve elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, and really GitOps is for everyone, right? Whether mm -hmm. you're a developer uh, or, you know, like rockstar developer or like a guru operations, right? Like, I guess that's, that's what I was trying to illustrate here. Um, <laughs> and security and, yeah, it's, and your security, network team it's, it's and network everybody, team. right? Yeah. Like it's, the whole it's, not, everybody can get in the pool here. Yeah. Everyone can get in the pool. So, <laughs> um, so the, really that's like what GitOps gets you, right? You're inter interacting with Git and anytime you want to make a change your environment is as just simple as a pull request, right? I want to scale. I want to, uh, make a blue green deployment. I want X, Y, and Z, right? So, um, so that's just Git in general. So Git, uh, Git sorry, GitOps in general. Um, so you know, we haven't been uh, talking about any like infrastructure or like how you do this or anything right. else that way. So you can actually be doing GitOps, you know, um, already, already, right? Yeah. Just not even know. Well, it. Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 yeah, exactly. And not, and not, even, and not even know it, right? Um, but it is. You know, in, unless you've been um, unless you've been living under a rock, uh, there's mm -hmm. this thing called Kubernetes out there. What? What's that? Uh, yes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I'm wearing the shirt today, so. Um, <laughs> what is this Kubernetes thing? Yes. What is this Kubernetes <laughs> stuff, right? So, um, you know, trying to, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone watching has been beaten over the head of what Kubernetes is. So right. I won't spend I won't spend more than a slide on it. Um, it's basically how to orchestrate uh, containerized workloads, right? Yep. Um, it's abstracts your underlying infrastructure. So the containerized workloads, you don't have to worry about um, where your containers land or anything like that. Kubernetes just, essentially it's a resource scheduler, right? You give it yeah. something and it makes sure it runs. You say, I want this resource, I want it this way, and it does it. And it does it, exactly. So, um, which is, which fits in perfect with, um, you know, OpenShift, right? Like what we, what we wanted with OpenShift, mm -hmm. um, you know, okay, we needed like, um, OpenShift needed a way to schedule workloads and just Kubernetes just, you know, I, I was part, I came on to Red Hat when, um, you know, I was an OpenShift V2 administrator, right? My previous life. Um, and Red Hat's like, hey, we need, 
OpenShift experts because we only have one in North America. And I go, okay, I'm coming along. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, and I was part of the two to three migration and now from three to four. So it's been, wow. it's been, wow. you know, wow. it's, um, you know, I've been here almost six years. No, actually six years. Wow. Mm. Time does fly. Been here six years. So, and, and I've seen a lot. So, <laughs> Um, I mean, I remember using, OpenShift. I remember using the cartridges and everything yep. from, from the old, old OpenShift days. And it's funny because uh, <laughs> I actually used it to do a phishing uh, campaign yeah, for yeah. testing internal security. And it was like the easiest, best experience I've had trying to deploy an application in a long yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. when I first, when I first saw it, when I first saw OpenShift V2, I was like, this is a game changer. Right. Like, yeah. you know, like to be able to like, you know, a few clicks, I got an application up and running. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it may seem, um, you know, e even as an admin, I go like, well, this is, this is big. Like, I wonder yeah. how this works. So, and that's how I delved in. Um, Same. And, um, you know, and, and even with like, you know, V2 to V3, right. Like that's how we, you know, like, oh, this is new Kubernetes thing. You know, this, these Google guys want us to help build this thing that they're calling Kubernetes. And we're like, okay, let's do it. Um, <laughs> so I was part of that migration from two to three. Um, but really, this is, um, you know, when you think of, of OpenShift, you have to think Kubernetes, right? Because it's essentially, um, as you see here, um, it's the, the, the core of what OpenShift is, right? And then, um, you know, we have some, some, uh, some tools on top, built on top of it, right, to, for you to be able to... Um, expedite your application delivery, right? Because as we all know, as Kelsey Hightower says, is that you need more than just Kubernetes, right? So right. Um, it's just, it, it's not even the starting point oftentimes, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like not even it's the just starting the foundation, point. Yeah, exactly. right? It's like, like the prerequisites, right? It's not even the starting point, you're right. Yeah. It's not even the starting point, right? It's like the prerequisites because you have to build so much on top of it. Right. Um, and so, and then, um, you know, this is kind of like our, our idea of like what a smarter Kubernetes platform looks like, right? And it, it includes ACM, which I'll, I'll touch on a little bit, right? Because ACM gets into kind of like GitOps um, mm -hmm. methodology. So, um, so OpenShift and GitOps is a perfect match, essentially, right? right? Because um, GitOps is you you you're storing everything in Git, right? And you need a way for it to sync everything into your environment, right? And with um, uh, with things like CRDs and um, you know methods to extend the Kubernetes API, um, this just becomes a natural fit, right? So now I can declaratively say, hey, I want application stack to go in Kubernetes, um, you know, my Kubernetes cluster. Yeah. Um, and then, and then that, that tool, whatever it is, and I'll talk about the tools later, right. Um, we'll sync that from Git, Right. And then you, you're taking advantage of the control loop in inside of Kubernetes to keep constant watch. Right. And to detect right. drift and all that. And I'll, I'll go deeper into that, into that, mm -hmm. um, um, into how CRD that works pattern yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, CRD yeah. pattern, yeah. yeah. Custom resource definition, custom resource. Um, but, you know, Kubernetes slash OpenShift and GitOps is a perfect match because, right. you know, you have a declarative um, way of describing your infrastructure and now you have a declarative way of deploying your infrastructure. And I'm like, okay, well then, you know. Yeah, put the two and two together and yeah, wow. Let's, let's get some, some peanut stuff. butter and chocolate together. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so um, there, it's, it's essentially, you know, uh, match made in heaven, essentially. So, um, so there's some, some things um, that I, that I kind of want to touch on is, you know, I'm, I'm kind of going to get a little bit opinionated here. Uh, surprise, surprise, right? I get what? opinionated. Um, <laughs> 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 um, th this is really, so to, to steal a quote uh, from um, one, one of the, uh, um, you know, here, our, our internal Slack, right? There's like, the, there's this group of us. Um, I used to call us the Argonauts, but I think we need to change names now because mm -hmm. now we're really just focused on GitOps and not just right. Argo. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but there's like a group of us. And actually, uh, I kind of want to give a shout out to Gerald uh, from the Red Hat Canada. He actually said like GitOps is kind of like a journey. And a lot of people say like journey, they kind of just use it as like a marketing thing or like, like a sales pitch. But like, no, this is literally a journey because... Um, you know, I started with GitOps with one opinion and it like changes, like the more and more I learned about it. Like I, I get, I get <laughs> the more and more I use it, the more and more my opinion changes. Right. So this is 
literally a journey we're all going through. Um, yeah, and, very much so. Uh, yeah, very much so. It's, it's, and, you know, as, as we learn more, we kind of have to adjust. And as GitOps is getting more buzzwordy and more popular, you know, there's going to be certain, um, um, you know, certain verticals that will have opinions on it, right? Like the, like the public sector um, and, you know, government and, you know, all, all of that uh, financial, they'll, they'll have opinions as they start adopting some of this stuff. Absolutely. So, um, like their so GitOps just, pipelines you know, are going to include things that other people's wouldn't. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. Or it's like, oh, I never, never would have even dreamed of like trying to do that with GitOps, mm-hmm. but you know, mm-hmm. it makes sense. Um, yeah. So it is, it is sold to steal from Gerald. So shout out to Gerald uh, from Red Hat Canada, by the way, Red Hat Canada, bunch of smart, smart folks. I think it's the best kept secret at Red Hat is Red Hat Canada. There's a, they're, and they're, <laughs> because they're very smart and then they're very humble. So it's like, it's, right. it's, it's just, you know, the perfect combination. Um, so this is a journey, right? So, um, but you know, kind of some of the principles that, that, you know, me and that group kind of came up with is you're going to separate your application code from the actual manifest that deploys them. Right. Um, Makes sense. Yeah. So you have your, your, your code and then you uh, in one repo, and then you have your manifest to deploy that code in another repo. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's still a separation of, of developer and infrastructure type things yes. yeah. right like yeah. the developers don't run the asylum and the infrastructure people don't tell the developers no kind of thing right yeah yeah exactly. you're working yeah. together <laughs> you're wor- yeah you're working to- yeah so a lot of so i kind of want to um there's also a um trying trying to diversify get uh sorry uh, devops as well because right. you know like i would have conversations with people it's like well it's it's never going to be one department because they have um you know like different goals and i'm like you're 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 misconstrued like you're mm-hmm. it's not a department right like you're still like there's still right. going to be an ops department there's still going to be a devs department it's yeah. how you work together right yeah um so it's yeah process exactly change yes process change there's more process <laughs> than anything else um you know you're not going to be sitting next to the java developer i mean maybe you want to but but yeah i mean it, does, it doesn't um necessarily I've, mean that i've usually sat in my devops roles in open spaces so yeah <laughs> That's, you know, and developers or ops or whatever would just kind of just come around when they needed me kind of thing. Yeah, ex- exactly. Oh. Yeah. It's like, well, let me, you know, when someone needed something, well, let me stand up and talk to Christian over here. You know, like the, yeah. the developer yeah. will walk to my desk because we're right. all in open space. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's like, like one thing, right? We found that um, you, you have separate, separate, uh, basically repos. You have one for your application and one for your, um, uh, for the, all the manifests. To deploy that application, right? And you're and all the deploy manifests are in standard Kubernetes manifests. So like that, that just makes sense, right? Um, you have, you know, you just use the native. So like YAML, I, did, I would argue, is the most uh, popular language now, <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> because it's like you know, like you just kind of have to use it now. Has like, anyone done YAML that developer. analysis on GitHub yet? Because please, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that yeah, needs exactly. to happen. I want to see how much YAML. Is <laughs> like, let's put YAML in the rankings, folks. Yeah, yeah. Does it pass HTML at this yeah, point? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when they do those those code, you know, those, yeah, the uh, code analysis ranking on or, yeah. I want to include YAML on that and see where yeah. it ranks. See where there. it is. Yeah. Um, the Red Monk uh, top twenty YAML. Yeah, YAML. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. YAML, right? And then maybe JSON, right? Right. On right. Right. right, right. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and that which, by the way, which is why I said standard Kubernetes manifest, because uh, it could be YAML or JSON. Um, mm-hmm. You know, pick your poison. Um, most people just use YAML just because they're just comfortable with it. Um, a lot of Python developers out there, so they're just used to YAML. Um, also, you avoid duplication of YAML, right? Or your 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 manifest, right? So you'll have one, you'll have a deployment, and instead of just copying that deployment for each environment, you'll you're gonna need a way um, to reference that one YAML, and I'll I'll talk about that in um, a little bit as well. So, um, and yeah, so the, the manifest should be applied with like standard tooling, essentially, right? So Essentially, here just keep it simple is the um, uh, is this is kind of the guiding principles we've been we've kind of been talking about right. um, internally. So uh, day two operations it's actually really easy, right? Um, kind of like what we've been talking about. You know, I you know create a, a pull request. Someone merges it. Someone runs a pipeline. 
pretty standard, right? So um, this yeah. workflow is is very um, um, you tried know, familiar. and true. I feel well, like well, tried yeah. and true. Yeah, yeah. familiar yeah. to the developers, but this is tied and true. So like, why reinvent the wheel? Kind of just take an operations approach to it as well. Um, is all changes are triggered from from Git, right? So once you got a GitOps a workflow in, you know, Chris Short may want five new nodes. Mm. Um, PR, give me, give me. right? <laughs> PR and it goes through the process, right? It just it essentially goes through the process of whatever it is, right? Whatever that process right. is um, of your your Git, and then yeah, whatever your approval it, process is to you know procure infrastructure or whatever, yeah. So and then once it merges, it's in. Um, yeah. it so you know, I kind of made a big stink about not talking too much about the tools, but it's kind of hard not to talk about the tools. Um, I don't well, want to talk about at some point. Yeah. yeah, at some point, yeah. I don't want to talk about <laughs> a specific tool. I want to talk about tools of the trade, right? I want to talk less right. about um, less about brand, more about mm. um, you know what, what's available there to you, right? So you're gonna need a way. So you have like Git and Git repo, and you have a declarative infrastructure like you know Kubernetes, OpenShift. Um, you need tools in order to make all that work, right? So um, two biggest tools really is a sync tool, right? You need a, a way to sync. Um, some people call it a, a sync tool. Some people call it continuous delivery, continuous deployment, whatever you want, right? Um, it's essentially the same same idea, right? So the some of the big ones out there for, for syncing is like Argo, right? Like Argo CD is a big one. Uh, Flux yeah. CD is another big one. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, ACM, right? Um, which is... Um, you know, um, advanced cluster management, advanced cluster Red management Hat. by yep. Red Hat, yeah. right? Um, there's yeah. also things like, um, um, like uh, templating tools, right? So, like, in order to not duplicate YAML, you need a, some way to templateize a deployment, right? Yeah. Like, you need a, a, a template deployment so that some of that, which is like mm -hmm. for YAML people, it's like, no, 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 don't templateize YAML. No, you got to, yeah, yeah, Sorry, exactly. You yeah, have to. <laughs> no, no, you, you, have, you don't want to be copying and pasting the same YAML file, like. In no, 12 different repos. For, that's, that's just mm, no. Mm, um, mm, no. And also, and, and that's something like Helm and, and Customize, right? Um, yeah. You, you can use that for templating as well. It works perfect in, in this. Um, and some, some tools actually kind of do a little both, right? Like Ansible kind of does templating and kind of mm -hmm. does syncing as well. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of yeah. it kind of sits. I like I like Ansible because it's almost like you don't know what you don't know where to place it. Right, because it, because it, yeah. <laughs> it's not quite config management. It's not quite, it's not quite orchestration. Yeah. It's not quite. It's not, yeah, exactly. It can be glue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It could be glue, or it's like it, it's like a, a chameleon. I would say, right? Like, right, you can really, exactly. You can yeah. really use it for a lot of things. Um, yeah. which is why I put Ansible on there. I, 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 I you know, being that. I mean, you can you can even write like the reconcile loops in Ansible if you really want to, right? Like, yep, that's, exactly. That's a cool yep. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Some um, there's been I think there's some uh, talks out there that the Ansible guy has done is like get ops with Ansible. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of talk. Check those out, guys. If you um, if you want to see those, those are really cool. You, uh, you can, you can Google for them. It's like the first, first things that come up is from Red Hat. Um, what logo is the donuts with the Corona? Not ACM, the donuts with the Corona. Oh, are you talking about open cluster management? Mashari? Mashari Maybe. Here? Because that, that's like the upstream of ACM. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe. Not ECM, but yeah, yeah, the logo donuts. Yes, yes, yeah. so that's what he's that's, talking about. So, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. open cluster management, but that's yeah. like the, the upstream of of ACM. ACM so. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, under Argo, yeah. So that's yeah. that's the, yeah. So, um, so these are kind of the tool, the trades. It's really kind of you need a way to do the sync and a way to do templating, right? And so, um, and you know, I, I want to talk a little bit about. Um, the, the, the syncing tools, right? So the, here on the right, you'll see an example of Argo, but just in general, um, the syncing tool is built on, um, it, it's, it's used to detect and expedite um, drift detection and correction, right? So it, it's, it's used to help with that. And it's built on um, the Kubernetes custom re, uh, CRDs, right? Custom resource mm -hmm. definitions. Um, which are GA know. features in Kubernetes now as a 116. So it's been yes. a few releases yeah. of it's, it's been, been a few GA. releases. Yeah, because yeah. we're, 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 we're about, about to, to release 120. 120. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. So CRDs is essentially is, is a way to extend the Kubernetes API without having to build it in tree. 
Um, there's actually right. there's in you know a little a little a little uh, tangent about um, uh, about CRDs. I saw a talk given. I forget. It, it was, um, you know, back when we were able to travel, it was, oh. um, um, it was KubeCon, right? And there was some guy from Google said, I want everything to be a CRD. And I right. think, in two, yeah, and, and at that point, like Kubernetes, I wonder what that be- makes Kubernetes, like uh, mm. just an API, a common API between... Well, I mean, and that's the thing, right? Like you, you know, can't necessarily, you know, write an everything API... As a CRD, but you can definitely do APIs with CRDs, right? Like, I mean, it's it's yeah, yeah. it's like a, it's it it's like chicken eggy kind of situation. It depends on your use case, but it's entirely possible that you could do everything with CRDs. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, he he said like I want a pod. The definition of a pod mm. to be a CRD, and I think mm. that's kind of inter- that's how that, just like the idea. That's how powerful CRDs are. Like, right. you essentially can do like kubectl get. Uh, my DB and whatever you define my DB to be, you know, that's it. Like yeah. OC like, get Chris short and like whatever that is, whatever comes up, <laughs> whatever you a, define that. A lot to of be. bash scripts. Yeah. A lot of bad, badly written bash scripts. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ton of Ansible, pretty yeah, well yeah. written. <laughs> and, no, Ansible with a bunch of shell, right? Yeah. In, in, <laughs> just shell modules. That's, that's what I want to write. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so it's just a way to extend the Kubernetes and, um, API and some of these sync tools are written to automatically detect drift and automatically do the correction. Right. So kind of the same thing, the reconcile loop, right? I see one Mm -hmm. pod running. You said you want to, I'm going to spin up the second one. Same idea, right? They, they took, they took advantage of that control loop, uh, that declarative nature of, of, uh, of Kubernetes. So, um, some of the most popular uh, GitOp tools for syncing, right? As we talked about before, Flux CD, mm-hmm. right? Is v- very popular, right? Um, they're uh, developed by the guys at WeaveWorks. Um, Argo CD, right? Which is, uh, um, we, which actually we just announced it at KubeCon that yeah. uh, we're joining that project, right? To, like um, pretty heavy investment in that project. Pretty heavy investment yeah. in it. Um, you know, Argo CD, and ACM, right, which is Advanced Cluster Management. Um, which obviously is another heavy investment, but we- Handling investment, yeah. So but that's part of the IBM acquisition, which is, I think, very cool as well. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, which is, yeah, a lot of people don't know that, like, IBM gave us ACM. Right, right? like, <laughs> like, it like wasn't those employees the, went through, like, new hire orientation and everything. Like, they're yeah. red headers now, right? Like, it's pretty cool. Yeah, they are red headers now. So, yeah, a little, you know, a little bit about that, right? A little bit pulling the curtain a little bit. Yeah, they actually, like- here's a bunch of developers. So which is kind of like some of the powerful thing that um, what happened with the IBM acquisition yeah. is like, they can do that, right? Like they can just give us resources, which I think is cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I kind of want to step back another tangent as, you know, as I'm known to do is like the whole idea is like, okay, well you're in Argo and ACM. Like what's the deal with that? Like mm-hmm. really one of them is going to be a, um, a developer tool and one of them is going to be for like security and operations. Um, right. And there's going like, to be tighter integration, obviously. Because we're yeah. ACM is a, is a bigger, it yeah, does yeah, more yeah. than just like synchronization of applications, yeah, right? Yeah. Like that is like one facet of ACM. Yeah. One little, <laughs> yeah, one little more like, it's like, why would mm-hmm. I use ACM or, or, or Argo? It's like, you're just, well, yeah, so there's a lot to that. Yeah, there's, there's a lot to that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There's, there's ACM, you know, that, it's a little more so what it actually does, but it, yeah. it does do um, the, you can have a, a, a GitOps um, experience with ACM, you know, mm-hmm. as well. And then I put Ansible obviously at the end, which is kind of almost similar to ACM, right? You can do GitOps, Ansible as a syncing tool, but Ansible does like a whole lot more <laughs> than just, right. than oh, just yeah. do the syncing, right? So, yeah. um, so, and just in case you're wondering like, you know, what is advanced cluster management? How does that work? So for so on next Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, new show starts for uh, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management. There you Talking go. just about that. So we'll have those experts on for you. Nice. So you can ping them with all your questions about how can I do GitOps with ACM or yeah, yeah, WTF definitely. is ACM, right? Like that's entirely yeah. welcome as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, Narendev says Ansible is too powerful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it is, yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so here, um, 
you essentially, what I was saying before is like, it's a declarative representation of the entire stack. So um, everything that needs to sync, whatever sync tool you need to, whatever sync tool you decide to use, um, it needs to, the, the entire representation of that stack needs to be in Git, right? Whatever, whatever tool you use, doesn't matter what tool you use is, is, is how, how it's what you're doing, right? And you need to get that, that whole uh, representation. So when I mean everything, I mean everything, right? So I'm, I'm talking to right. you infrastructure guys, right? So mm -hmm. developers actually, funny enough, are uh, easier to talk about GitOps because they kind of understand the whole flow a little better, right? Because yeah. they're a little ahead of that stuff with operations. Like when I say the entire stack, like, yes, I mean the entire stack, right? Like I mean everything, like the definition of how to spin up a VM, the definition of um, mm -hmm. your machine set definitions, all the namespaces, all the deployments, all the, all the definition on how it, everything gets shoved in to get. And, uh, that actually could be, um, could be a little scary, right. As you, you mentioned before yeah. to, yeah. to the operations, but, yeah. um, it actually puts more control in your hands and more visibility in your hands, right. You can see who's mm -hmm. doing what and who's requesting what and what's happening in your infrastructure, right. You can see you have a representation of it and, um, um, and usually the sync tool has a, has a way of defining what gets loaded into your cluster, right? Because like here, again, uh, there's an example of, of Argo and how to get, um, you know, I'm saying, hey, I want you to target this revision. Uh, I want you to get this uh, repo URL. Um, you know, I want you to deploy it to this server, that sort of thing, right? Um, it's usually declarative. It's, they're, they're all pretty similar. Um, and so the base, this is a basic workflow. Right, so I'm, I'm going to talk about basic workflow. And, right, like, um, so there is a question in chat, but I feel like uh -huh. we're going to get to the answer about how to, yeah. you know, remove race conditions and you know, mm -hmm. have an order of operations. But Actually, I feel like yes. that is going to get answered here very soon. So that I'm not is... ignoring that question. So yeah, yeah, RSCN. I see the question too. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We're actually well, going to just... answer that specific question. So that's yes. good. So, I like when you ask qu ask questions that I'm going to answer. <laughs> 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 makes your life easy, huh? Yeah, it makes my life easy. Yeah, I don't know. Like I've done like countless of summits, and like when someone asks a question, I'm like, I was going to get to that. I love it. I, I love I love when you ask a question <laughs> that I that I already know the answer to. Um, but like from this is like a not even a ten thousand foot view. It's like a ten million foot view, right? Of how the basic workflow is, is right? You, you make a change yeah. and get. Um, and that's um, the the sync tool checks the status, right? Like it'll 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 receive like oh there's a change, I'll mm -hmm. synchronize that into the cluster, right? So um, as soon as whatever branch you're, you're tracking or whichever um, tag you're tracking, as soon as the change is made, um, it'll it'll start it'll sync that to your cluster, right? Nice. So that's that's basic workflow. Right. Um, but as as we all know, it's not all unicorns and rainbows, right? Um, there's some challenges, right? There's definitely some challenges that come, that come into this, right? So, um, you know, we, there's, there's been a lot of back and forth, um, you know, within, with, uh, my, my fellow Argonauts, we need to really mm. change our name, but, um, our fellow get, get ops, um, mm. folks, um, in our chat, get ops enthusiasts, and get ops yes. enthusiasts at Red Hat, right? Do you have one repo or do you have a separate repo for, or basis for environments? Like, like, do you have one monolithic and do everything with tags? Um, I think that's the, that was the original idea. Mm -hmm. um, some people find like, well, no, I think I want separate repos. So like, you know, repo structure kind of gets pretty complicated yep. and uh, you'll see that in the demo, right? Cause I, 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 I did a little demo, right? It's a little small, easy demo. Um, uh, managing secrets, right? So like, I'm like, all right, if everything is in Git, then that means my username and password for my databases are in Git. Like, so like, that's just like a challenge you need to, you know. Yeah, like you've got to assess that and figure yeah, out how you, you're going to manage that. Yeah. yeah how are you going to manage that? Yeah, there's just some things that are just like, okay, well, like, you know, if it's if it's not in Git, then where would it be? Or if we are putting it, what do we do? So that's kind of like some of the things, um, kind of a topic. Um, and we're, I'm actually going to have a stream specifically about secrets. I think it's uh, episode two is going to be about secrets. I need to look at my list. Um yeah, it was like two or three, I forget. Yeah, it's yeah. two or three. So we, we will talk about secrets. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about sealed secrets. Yeah, we're going to talk about sealed secrets. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, order of dependent deployments, right? So this is uh, the question you were asking. Uh, was it Calrissian? Yeah, Cal Calrissian, Calrissian, I think, is the right pronunciation. Oh, Lando Calrissian. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, order of deployments, right? Like there's some things that just doesn't lend itself to declarative, right? So it's... it's um, 
you know, there, that's going to be a challenge, right? Um, like I said, non-declarative requirements and integration with your CI CD tools, right? Like you have Jenkins, um, OpenShift pipelines, you have Tekton, like does the CI CD or the sync tool manage deployments? Like, how does that work? So like, you know, you already have the process in place. How are you going to, you know, fit that square peg in the wrong hole? So, um, sort of thing, right? So there's just like yeah. some of these like just challenges that trying to migrate over to um, like a GitOps workflow, right? And, um, you know, there's the, the first approach, I think is, is, um, is one of the ones that, uh, the, the, again, a shout out to the Red Hat Canada that they came up with is that to have multiple repositories, right? So like I have like my production repo, I have, um, uh, and then, you know, my config repo, for, for staging my config repo for, uh, for testing. And then I have like my code right in one repo. And then I have different configurations for different uh, environments. Right. So, um, oh gosh. somebody says, get sub modules are the answer. Give sub modules. Oh, interesting. Oof. That'd be an interesting, that'd be an interesting no. topic actually. No, <laughs> no, get sub -mod <laughs> to quote open pixel, get modules are made by the devil themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can say that because it was in the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ex exactly, exactly. Um, so uh, approach two, right, is essentially you have a single repository for everything. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not a fan of this, um, mm. this approach. That yeah. It's Look, mm. so th this is one repo, right? This is not three yeah, separate the, repos. No, this isn't three separate repos. This is just we, we a tree of the it. one giant <laughs> yeah. repo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, we, we couldn't fit it in the slide. Like, this is one repo and just all the, um, and, and not only the directories, right? And a bunch of overlays, a bunch of bases, a bunch of directories. You also have like tags and branches to worry about in each different um, environment, right? So this is, I'm not, you can do this this way to, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, um, this is essentially, well, you, you wrote this probably about the uh, Git sub modules, but this is also a nightmare to manage as well. Yeah. <laughs> I see that you wrote on the chat, but it's just, yeah. I was like, oh, that's, that's a good quote because this is essentially, for me, it might work for some people, it might not. And um, yeah, it, it really depends on like how your organization manages infrastructure and manages applications, right? Like this might be the right approach for you. A monolithic yeah, yeah. repo kind of thing might be where you're at right now. And that might be how you do this at first, but yeah. I would advise you to think. Yeah, think just more like, smaller things is better than one yeah. big thing, right? Kind of like, like microservices, <laughs> right? Like we're yeah. you know we're, we're kind of in that stage where it's like okay, maybe like bite-sized things are, are better than you know one big monolithic, right? So, um, so yeah, so that those are really two approaches. I think I've kind of I, I you know I kind of sway back and forth. I think I've kind of really settled on the multi repositories, right? Uh, if you have different opinions, feel free to throw in the chat um, or feel free to send us a tweet, whatever the, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's a better way. It's, it's, it's just better. It's easier to manage, right. To have these different repos. It's like, okay, well, I need to make a config change to the dev repo versus, okay, let me go to the main repo and go to the dev branch and then go to the folder that has the dev configuration versus the, per like I, to me, the other way is easier. Right. So, um, so this is my, you know, my, my, my opinion is really just go to single, single approach. Right. So yeah, pretty um, much everybody in the chat is like poo-pooing, uh, get sub modules. So yeah. yeah poo-pooing get sub modules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Linus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, so speaking of someone with, uh, with, uh, strong opinions, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, the next thing is actually managing secrets. And I actually had a pretty interesting conversation. I'll be, I'll be uh, curious as to, um, you know, we can kind of touch on it and we'll get into deeper in the next episode. But um, mm -hmm. so you're externalizing your secrets, right? So um, that means your secrets are, in, they're base 64, right? They're encoded. They're not encrypted. Um, Which so is, the idea is essentially yeah. you want to encrypt your secrets yeah, and then store that encrypted secret in Git essentially. Right. right. And so even, yeah. And, you know, people might think, oh, my gosh, well, that that means someone could take my thing and like grab 17 GPUs from AWS and crack my yeah. code. Well, I mean, yeah. if you're it's, that worried about it, yeah, you cost, need something yeah. <laughs> like that can auto cycle those yeah. a lot faster. Right. Like 
Yeah. yeah. And, and so there's ways to um, do this. <laughs> yeah. And there is ways to do it. There's ways to do this. Right. And like, I think the, the consensus, I think a lot of people like even in Red Hat, I think, um, uh, Bitnami has uh, sealed secrets, right. Uh, the Weaveworks guys recommend sealed secrets. And I think the consensus at Red Hat is like sealed secrets is how you store it, right? Yeah. Um, or you could use something like HashiCorp Vault, CyberArk. Yeah. Uh, you could do, you could keep your encrypted secrets in private repos, you know, if, you, if you're that worried about it, right? Like there's, there's all kinds of ways to manage that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Is there's CyberArk OSS? I don't believe so. I don't Sorry. believe so. No. 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 I know. But there's, there's a lot. Like, I mean, you just yeah. list a few here. Yeah, you many others. Yes, lots yeah, of ways others, to do others, secrets yeah. now. I, I won't have enough. It, it'll, it'll look like the. Uh, it'll look like the big tree slide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll, look, it'll look like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> it'll, <laughs> it'll look like the CNCF landscape. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people like so on the chat. A lot of people. Yeah, exactly. It'll look like the CNCF landscape. A lot of people in chat like the uh, like Vault. So yeah. that's good. Um, I mean, HashiCorp Vault's a great tool, right, for managing secrets, and it yeah. integrates well into the GitOps pattern. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and so really managing secrets is no secret. You just have to encrypt it or manage it somehow. So, right. um, you know, we're not we're not brushing this off in any way, shape or form. We completely know. understand. And there will be an episode about this. There'll be an episode. About, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, because I had a conversation with someone like, OK, well, we have a way to manage secrets. We had a way to encrypt secrets. How come there's no tool that does both? And it's right. like. We'll, yeah. we'll talk. We'll talk more about that, right? I, I think that's a very good um, uh, startup idea, by the way. Whoever has coding skills, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> to give you something that does both. Yeah. Um, so there's um, sometimes there's actually, there's actually somebody linked a Vault Secrets oh, operator. Vault Secrets yeah. operator. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Try to, <laughs> someone wrote in chat. Uh, sorry, uh, this is kind of a little bit off topic. Try explaining CNCF map. In a series called "Let's Understand This," shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, a, like, like mini series. Like, so the CNCF used to actually print like big copies of the landscape. They don't do that anymore. But yeah. the last version that they printed had the trail map on it, which yeah, is what yeah. I think is way more uh, useful than the yeah, actual yeah. landscape itself. Yeah, yeah. The trail map has like 10 things on it that you know you're going to need in a cloud native environment. And then that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Go to the landscape to figure out okay, I need this thing for, you know, uh, containers. I need this thing for security. I need yes, exactly. This thing yeah. for secrets, right? Like that's what the landscape is for. You take that trail map, you look at, okay, I need all these things, and you flip that thing over and you look at the landscape and you're like, yes, this is intimidating, but they're all in boxes. But they're all in boxes. Right. They're all in containers. Ha -ha. Yeah, they're all oh, in sorry. their own little <laughs> containers. So you then, you know, you're just matching and pairing like what works for you and your infrastructure, right? Like you've got to yeah. test this stuff. What works for your organization is the right tool for you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it made, they made it a little bit more, you can navigate it a little bit better. So mm -hmm. Yeah, they've, it's it's all like just go to l.cncf.io and it's there for you, right? There you go. Um, so yeah, so again, order of deployments. Some uh, someone asked, right? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you do actually have cases where you yeah. need to deploy things specific order. So yeah, this this was an issue actually at Red Hat that we ran into because we went all in on operators, right? If you unless you're living under a rock, if you talk to a Red Hatter, you would. At some point, they're going to say operators. Mm -hmm. Some point in the conversation, I don't know. Even if you're talking about you know, something unrelated, we'll say operators, <laughs> right? Because we're just all operator centric. And the way yeah. operators and our um, operator lifecycle manager works, there's a certain there's a certain order of operations that happen, right? So in the end, it's all YAML, right? So in the end, it's all YAML or JSON, whatever. Pick your two. Um, one day there's going to be XML, right? So it's going to be. It, it will come back know, to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah pod slash O XML. Yeah. Where's that? <laughs> Where's that RFE? Anyway, mm. um, <laughs> there's uh, there's just a certain order you need to do in order to deploy an operator, right? Um, you know, you need to create a namespace or project before deploying an application. You need to wait until storage gets up. There's just, um, you know, there's uh, there's a way to do this, right? And the tools like like the templating tools like customize and help. Um, automatically mm -hmm. handle this in some cases, right? Especially like the order and things, right? You can yeah. dictate order and customize and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and Helm. Um, and also the tools 
have a way to do things um, in certain orders, right? In, in certain, in Argo City has this thing called sync phases and waves, right? That'll, that addresses a lot of it. All the other tools have, uh, have something similar. Um, it's just, I, I just work with Argo so much that I kind of just know this in general. Um, there's, uh, there's like a sync phase, right? So there's like stuff to do before you sync, the actual sync, and then stuff to do that after the sync happens, right? So the, the sync is keeping all the manifests, um, the declarative manifests in sync in your cluster. Um, you, you can do things before and you can do things after. So that way, like things like, you know, wait until storage is set up, wait until, you know, your database is up and running, things like that, things you just need to do. Um, yeah. And then uh, within each phase, you can have multiple waves, right? So, um, you know, you have, you know, one does like, it'll wait until one wave finishes before the next wave starts, right? So, um, you know, with these, uh, with, with these tools, you can, you know, kind of dictate what order things run. Um, and in my demo, um, I actually run into, I ran into this issue, which, which I fixed with sync waves and things like that, um, is uh, the EFK stack, right? Like there's just yeah. things that need to um, happen in a certain order. Or it's happening in a certain order. It's just, there's, there's, there's a no database way involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. There's, there's many, many waves, yeah. many, many phases involved. So yeah. um, that's how you kind of handle the order of operations in GitOps, right? The, the, the sync, you know, all sync tools have a, a way to address this, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, Ansible has that, ACM has it. Every, yep. every tool that I've ever run into that says it can do GitOps has something like yep. this. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then um, there's also other ways to do it as well, right? So, like, there's things sure. that just you can't be done in the declarative way. So like you use things like init containers and jobs, right? You can mm -hmm. write an operator, uh, do resource hooks, right? So have a way, um, you know, have some some hooks, have, have them hit hooks in different phases. Uh, I'm a big fan of init containers and jobs just because it's just a native Kubernetes way of doing it. I have the yeah. tool there, um, but you can do it. You can do things in, in different ways, right? So, um, so, um, so integrating with CI CD tools, right? So it's like, how come, how come I need Argo CD when I have Jenkins? And actually, I think Jenkins is another topic, but I'll, I'll get to that a little bit. But um, it's called oh, Argo sure. CD or Flux CD. It's not called Argo CI CD. Right. Not, <laughs> right, like, right, right, right. Yeah. Its tool is only doing CD. It doesn't, you still need a CI process, right? You still need right. uh, Jenkins to do things. You still need Tekton to do things, right? Cloud mm -hmm. whatever you use, right? Um, yeah. Um, you know, Jenkins kind of took, I think Jenkins is, is its own category um, because like, it's like- Well, it's been added onto and bolted onto so much over the years, right? Yeah, like it's, it's, it's yeah. got a lot of responsibilities now and a lot of people's infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, exactly. Yeah, it has, yeah. And, and a lot of people built into it. And it's like, I can do all this with Jenkins. I'm like, yeah, yeah, like you, you, you can, mm -hmm. right? Because <laughs> like Jenkins is just Now like decouple that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Now decouple that, right? Yeah. Um, oh, I have another Jenkins thing over here. Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Now you have yeah, two Jenkins. I, well, I mean, there, yeah, you can have Jenkins that spins up Jenkins slaves that does other Jenkins yeah. jobs. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, gets, um, it gets it gets crazy, right? It gets it gets it's a big a bit crazy. Yeah. Um, so you know, remember that 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 simple um, high level um, sync, right? Like the the if I go back a few slides, um, I, this uh, this right here, right? Like so this so we got this. That's the basic workflow. The workflow actually. Right. If we dig a little deeper, uh, looks like this. Right. So, um, uh, so you have an application developer that has an application repo, and we have an environment repo, kind of like what we said here. Right. Um, developer, um, you know, does a commit to the application repo. Um, you know, it'll, you know, it'll do a merge somewhere, and, and then a CI/CD pipeline happens. Uh, maybe it creates an image, puts an image to a, a container. Um, you know, whether it be Quay, right, mm -hmm. or, or JFrog or whatever you want. Wherever um, you want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it and then that pipeline updates the environment repo manifest, right? Because like you may have a different tag you want to deploy into your environment, right? You're changing versions, v1 versus v2, so that sort of thing. Um, and then um, and then that gets glommed together, right? And in, in, in the in the admin side, we have an infrastructure repo, right? So mm -hmm. we have a, uh, a, a repo that is just takes care of the underlying infrastructure of, of um, in this case, OpenShift, right? Or Kubernetes, OpenShift, however you want. Um, so that gets an infrastructure repo. And like everything in the center of all of this is the sync tool, right? Whether you're using like ACM, whether you're using Flux, Argo, whatever, 
it applies all of that to your to your cluster, right? So the, this is the CD part, the de delivery part. It actually delivers and makes sure that your cluster is in the same version um, as you have in your repo, right? So, yeah. um, so this is this here is something you know. Take a picture, memorize it, right? This is kind of how it, how it looks like, right? Digging a little deeper. Um, this is how the the workflow looks like. Nice. So, uh, GitOps enables you to deploy across multiple clusters, <laughs> but like, you know, it's a trap, right? right. <laughs> How do you manage yeah. configuring without copying, pasting YAML everywhere, right? So right. first we talked about the sync tools, right? Um, you know, well, how do I get, you know, this one YAML in 10 different Git repos mm -hmm. without duplicating it, right? So um, one of the things, and I, I think is the tool that I use a lot. Um, I think it's becoming like the de facto, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people like Helm, and I actually haven't played enough with Helm. I don't know if anyone in the chat uses Helm within their GitOps workflow. I haven't used Helm. I haven't had the really the time to sink my teeth into it. Um, but a lot of people love using Helm as well for their template. Mm -hmm. um, I use Customize just like you said. This like when I first was kind of delving into GitOps, someone said just use Customize for you know that question yeah. you just asked. I go okay, and then I just learned it and I just kept using it. <laughs> um, it's it's essentially well, the the powerful thing about Customize is that you can reference another um, another YAML file, right? So the deployment, I say, I want to reference that deployment file, but when you read it into the cluster, uh, patch, patch, you know, patch the scale, right? Like instead of yeah. instead of two, I want three, right. right? Or instead of the name being foo, I want it to be bar, right? right. So, um, so your configuration for each environment gets, gets very, very small because you're referencing one YAML, but then you're patching it to match your environment. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why um, Customize just lends itself really well to, to GitOps is just the templating aspect of it. I think it's becoming the templating language of GitOps, but uh, Helm is coming and saying, hold your horses. So there's a lot of people that like Helm um, that, in my conversations that I that I Yeah, so, I mean, pe some people have, you know, latched on the helm from the early days and you know they've mm -hmm. been okay with tiller and you know using helm and everything else and now with helm 3 coming out and the removal of tiller you know helm is you know in you know OpenShift now you can use yeah. it you know yeah, yeah. easily with OpenShift now and I mean, for pretty much any cluster because you don't have that dependency on having some binary running inside the yeah. cluster anymore yeah, yeah. so exactly. yeah i can see helm like getting that you know yaml templatization you know boost now yeah finally. yeah yeah it's especially without the tiller now it's going to get a wider adoption so i think mm -hmm. um i think that'd be uh i think it'd be interesting to see where, where we end up here uh what the cool thing about customize is actually built into the, the cli the oc right QCTL. yeah it's already there <laughs> yeah it's already there so maybe that's why it's it's really popular mm -hmm. um you know it was including starting a 1.14 so it's it's um it's there um so like their customizes organized like in a hierarchy, right? Just kind of like everything else is, is, is a series of directories with YAMLs. Mm. Um, there's like a base or it used to be a base. Uh, obviously um, uh, it's deprecated now. I don't know if you all, all you know, if you're, if you're using customized, the base directory is deprecated technically. Okay. Um, but you can still, you can still kind of use it. You still kind of have it with, you just reference it as a resource and um, you know, you put it, you know, whatever, um, you know, however, um, in whichever or, um, order you want it in, right? So, and then the, the overlay, right, um, is essentially things that you're overlaying on your, uh, on that base, um, uh, on that base YAML file, right? So you have a YAML file uh, that's that's the, your base and your overlay, you overlay it on top of it and it'll, um, it'll basically spit out another YAML, right? It'll take the base YAML and whatever you're patching and it'll spit out you know, the, the YAML for you to, um, uh, for you to deploy, right? So you have kind of a, uh, um, you have your resources here, right? Um, when you run, um, uh, when you run your, uh, your environment with your overlay, it'll include the base and it'll just do whatever patching it needs to do. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Maybe we'll do an entire episode on customize. Maybe that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Um, yeah. So just to kind of see how that works, it's actually really easy. If I can, if I can get it, anyone can get it. So it, I, I got it like the first time. I was like, oh, that's pretty easy. Um, 
it, it's almost like a, you know, like I get the same kind of feel with customized that I did with Ansible when I first picked it up, right? Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. It feels kind of natural, right? Yeah, like, so yeah it feels yeah. kind of natural. Yeah, it just yeah. feels natural the way you do it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so just kind of just some of the um, things I already mentioned is uh, basically don't duplicate, um, you know, um, YAML, right? And, um, you know, some of the differences, um, by the way, we had in OpenShift version three, we had a way to do templates, right? So like people would ask, why does Red Hat do templates? Why don't they just use Helm charts? And it's like, this is back when Helm still had Tiller and it was a little right. insecure. Right, uh, you know, we like, were worried about, you know, yeah, having just, some daemon running in your cluster essentially. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that could do anything, yeah. Anything so it, kind of, it wanted, yeah. Yeah, um, templates will be deprecated. Um, we still support it because uh, 3.11 still support, but moving forward, Helm charts, um, customize the way to do it um so it's uh, and you know in in we support both right right uh, red hat supports both helm and and, and customize so mm -hmm. it's just really um it's really kind of like choose your poison sort of thing right so it's um uh again i didn't have a lot to talk about helm because i don't really know enough maybe one of these episodes will you know, I'll, I'll dive deep a little we, bit to what I we got a helm expert here at Red Hat and he, he wrote a book well, recently right. about um, helm, you know, we yeah, yeah, should yeah, probably that's... tap him on the shoulder and be that's like, right. Hey, why don't you come me on with here? helm? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> helm. Yeah, yeah. That'd be, that'd be good. Uh, um, yeah. He might owe you a favor or two too. I feel that's like. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah. So um, I have a quick demo to kind of just uh, see, um, you know what it looks like right so like in right. in, in, the, in the last few moments i know we're, we're a little bit over but that's this, fine You're this, fine. this will this won't take very long right so i have um yeah, i have a, a git repo yeah let me actually put this in the chat here oh thank you i was going to do the, the um you can do it there you go there we go so um yeah so it, it's like, it's actually it says openshift config expand because i actually have a where's my other repo it's somewhere here. Somewhere. Oh, that's right here. Over the rainbow. The rainbow. <laughs> um, no, it's not. Four. No, not you me. did the blob. <laughs> there we go. So, like, this is kind of um, explaining kind of like the, the power of of uh, mm -hmm. of customize, right? So, like this this repo deploys authentication for OpenShift, creates three groups. It does the cluster role binding for those groups. Um, it deploys an application um, and then install, you know, obviously it installs Argo CD first, obviously, but it installs right. Argo to do all that. Um, and um, and it does the RBAC for Argo itself. Dang. And so then you, the expanded one- You've got this all one, figured out for us. Thank you. It does it all for <laughs> you, right? So the expanded one actually does every, does all of that. And on top of that, it does, it deploys the EFK stack. Wow. Uh, with OLM, right? With operators, yeah. uh, it deploys yet another application and it, it creates a marketing group, right? That has nice. edit access, right? So like it does, it does everything that one does except um, a little more. Like if I go here to, um, hold on, let me see here. Config overlays default, config uh, overlays default, your customization, right? So if I look here, my customization script, I basically say, take that config, mm -hmm. right? My upstream config in that other repo. And I'm just going to add a little bit more, right? I'm going to okay. add a couple things to it, right? So cool. I don't have to duplicate all of this code in another repo. I just get it. And then I can either patch it if I want, or I can include other things to it. Um, Bases you know. versus patches. Like if I wanted to patch this versus, you know, like base it off of a series of files. It, is there a different like flow to that? The um, the only flow is that you would have, um, let me go over this here. I don't, do I have a, I have an example of patching? You probably, uh, it's probably a question that I didn't prepare you for. <laughs> yeah, there is, so it essentially you would add a, I don't think I'm patching in this repo to be honest with you. Yeah, sorry, my bad. <laughs> yeah, um, I actually do patch in another repo. So let's let's, let's look over here. Um, not this one. 
uh, overlays. Yeah, cluster one, right? So I have, um, this is my, um, ah, so okay. I do a, so I'm, I'm, I'm loading in, let me go my customization, right? So I'm loading in the base, mm -hmm. right? Which is the base. When I read that, I want to take um, the deployment and I want to patch it, right? All right. I want to patch it with whatever it's in this file. And also I want to take the route and patch it, whatever it is in this file. So if I look at the, nice. the deployment, right? I said, replace the, this environment variable with this value. Okay. And then read that same base deployment. Oops. And replace the host value with right here. I'm, I'm making, I'm leaving it blank because I just want OpenShift to create the standard route. But like, if I had a specific route, I would right. type that you in. Right. Type so, that in. Yeah. Th that that's essentially like the difference between, um, and it's all in the customization file. So. Yeah. Uh, Narendra is like, Hey, you need to use Octo tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. Actually, I, I haven't, <laughs> You, know, you haven't had a chance to tinker with that yet? Yeah, I haven't had a chance to tinker with that, but you know. Oh, I, dude, I, just I, grab you a token and get going, man. And it'll, just get going? It's, it's yeah. a life changer. It really, really is, especially with yeah. the Kubernetes repos, man. Yeah. Woo! Oh, okay. Saves I'm me gonna... so much time. <laughs> Actually, yeah, because I, I will need all these tabs open. Um, right. So essentially, yeah, so my um, the, the point of, of, of showing you that other repo was that I'm going to suck things in from other repos. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have to have it's do all it. in git right like it's, yeah, it's just i'm git. just gonna take yeah. this piece from git and this piece from git and you know maybe i need to patch it with another thing but that's in git too right like yeah it's exactly. all there so like if i go um so first let me let me install argo right so hold on let me go to my um let me export here i want to eat your freshly fresh cluster yeah right like if i get pods grip argo right there's nothing there um yeah, there. so I'll, I'll install Argo. Okay. So this here essentially just installs Argo. Um, it'll it will loop through until um, Argo is installed. Nice. So it'll fail the first time, obviously, because it's not just reasons. Order of <laughs> operations, like I said before, <laughs> is hard. And then I'll um, deploy this repo, right? Wait, it said nothing. Oh, never mind. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, okay. Unchanged. Yeah, based, and then um, it, it, this essentially installs that entire stack, right? So it'll um, nice. deploy the RBAC, it'll deploy the users, it'll you know from that other repo, and then mm -hmm. on my repo, I'm installing um, EFK, and then it'll install that stack as well. It'll do all that syncing. So, um, and that's my cluster config, right? Mm -hmm. And my in my cluster config. I have, um, let me go to manifests. I have, uh, no, that's not it. Maybe it is. It's like you just built oh, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, project base. So I have, um, oh no, that's, that's the RBAC. Applications base. Watch as we. There we go, applications. Uh, get Christian to install Octotree live. Um. That's <laughs> The um, so here I'm saying okay, you know I'm gonna deploy this application. This is not in my repo, right? This is an application repo. Yeah, that's something else. Yeah, that's something else, right? So that's this repo here, the application repo. So me as a um, operations, I can deploy the cluster, but if a change needs to be made, it needs to be made in the application repo, right? And my uh, my sync tool, Argo CD's job is only to make sure those are in sync, right? So whether you're using Argo CD or ACM, it does sim mm -hmm. the same thing, right? Um, so if I go here, let's see where it is. Um, kubectl get pod stash a grep Argo. Cool. Let's go do uh, get routes grep Argo. I don't know what the Argo. There we go. There we go. Uh, here, yes, advanced, uh, accept the self-signed certificate. Login via OpenShift, right? Because we want to do the OAuth. Mm -hmm. We're tying in OAuth. Another shout out to uh, Andy Bach, who, Bach, who did uh, the tie-in, the yep. Argo CD and the... Uh... So that says it gives me an HD password file. That means um, my, my users are loaded in. Mm -hmm. Right, allow uh, selected permissions. So... Here it gives me 
um, configuration here. Uh, like for instance, this is out of sync. I can Ooh. sync this on demand. You better tell that thing to sync up. Well, I can sync all apps, right? And right. you know what? That it prune Do whatever it. it doesn't find. Um, okay. It's doing stuff. Yeah. And um, boom, so boom, here, boom, 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 green. <laughs> so here, yeah. So here I have my cluster config, right? Um, that this is like, you know, I set up my authentication, mm -hmm. my container security uh, policy. scanner, right? Nice. The policy yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Nice. My uh, EFK, you know, uh, monitoring cluster config. everything else. Yeah. By the way, this is crazy. If you see this here, how do I? <laughs> I, I like the I like this view, the little ant view. I don't know. Oh, okay. It, it yeah, looks yeah, like yeah. ants to me, but yeah. um, I, I can see the yeah. Yeah. So like here, it'll it'll start show sixty eight hidden resources. So like, <laughs> you can see how complex this is. That which is why but I like, use like sync waves and things like that. Yeah. Because uh, there's so many components to get this up and running. Uh, but you've done so much of this work already that people can literally just use this as a template. And go mm -hmm. from there, right? Like that's yeah, pretty cool. And if you just reference my repo, yeah, and then just do a patch if you don't like patch something. stuff all you want. Yeah, yeah just patch this stuff. So like you just have minimal <laughs> YAML, right? You just have like right. maybe a couple of YAML files that does do this patching. Yeah, if you don't like the names I use or anything. Yeah, you like can that. fork it. You can contribute back upstream if you want. All the yeah. whole nine yards, exactly. Yeah. And um, you know what's cool about this is like I can log in. Um, not that one. I can log in via like a regular user, right? Like OCP developer. Says this is why you need an 85 inch monitor. No yeah, bar, exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. The, the view, the big view. Um, so I logged in as developer and I only have access, right? Uh, right. To a project, right? I don't have that. So me as yeah. a developer. You can't see the cluster config. You can't see the the scanners. Nothing, yeah, none I of that. See, yeah. I just see my app because really that's all I care about, right? Right. Um, you know, even if I want to delete it, um, it won't let me, right? Because it's like, you know. Yeah, it's your, it's it's in prod. You ain't, you ain't touching yeah, it. Yeah, but I can sync it, right? I can sync it if I want, right? Because that's that's something that a developer would want to do, right? So I want to be able to sync yeah. it if something. I made a change. If I make a change or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's in so, a repo that they control. It's gone through an approval process that they've established. Yep. They yeah, want to exactly. sync it. There you go. It's in Git. It's been merged. Off it goes. Off it goes, right. And so, um and this is and this is just my view, right? So right. I, I'm I'm able to do to as a developer just see, without having to worry about like what's the underlying infrastructure and without like like we said before, it's not like, um, you know, you're you're not you're not letting the developers run the uh, run the farm here, right? right? There's still separation. It's mm -hmm. just how this is driven, um, is different, right? So like if I go here, and if I want to, um, let's say, oh, this is prices, right? So like if I want to take the front end and um, uh, let's go to the deployment, right? Like if I want two replicas here, right? right let's let's just go through a simple workflow. Uh, where, what can I, I can't even fork it on my own. Let's go over here. My old, my old uh, tiger team. Oh, here. okay. Back I was about to day. say, you could put it in our doc repo if you want to. <laughs> right. And then here I'm going to, um, you know, make a change. Uh, front end, and I want to right edit here again. Admin guys, this is easy, right? You can even do it through the web UI. I want mm -hmm. two replicas, right? Yep. You know, I'm I'm doing it to master because this is a demo. But um, normally you would do a branch. Normally you do you a branch. You go process it, get merged, and then you would do yeah. The same. So then I just do a PR, itself. right? I want to go, I want to take my PR into this because mm -hmm. I want two replicas, right? So now you can already see that there's like, to change the scale, um, I have one replica here to where you can actually already see, you know, you know, like, it was me that made this to this there's, on this There's day. a hash there's over there on hash, the right. right. Yeah. Create there's pull a verified request. user, the whole nine yards, Please, right? Yeah. right? Like create pull requests, right? So then now, um, right, you go through the process right here. I go, you know, like, you know, why do you want this? Right, like you just go through the same workflow as you would normally, except, you know, you start to review, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Um, right, and I, I can, um, you know, merge pull request. Yeah, that's confirm it. Uh, confirm merge, right? There you go, man. So now my, my change is in, right? right. So then Argo, um, 
Well then, um, where is the deployment here? Yeah, so there's one pod running here. So if, now that I sync this. Wait, but you forked it. There we go, yeah. Well, yeah. I did a merge, right? So I, I, I did, I merged the pull request. Now there's another mm -hmm. pod coming. So I'm like, okay, Argo C says, hey, um, that pull request comment, <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, exactly, please, please merge this. If it were only that easy, right? So like, this is a approximation yeah, like we're, of something that happens for weeks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> There is a um, process that gets that thing merged that yeah, yeah, exactly. you have to figure out in your organization. Yeah, in yeah. your environment. Yeah, <laughs> since I'm since I'm <laughs> I'm approving my own pull request. I'll right. you. Uh, um, you wouldn't do that in production. So now I have two pods, right? So mm -hmm. now, you know, I as a developer, you have two new pods, at, fresh a, pods. As, yeah. yeah, fresh or I even as a junior developer, I changed the infrastructure here. Right, right. Like yep. I had direct change into this infrastructure. Um, using a comment. So now me as an admin, I can see who made that pull request, mm -hmm. who, um, who approved it, me, me. Why me. it was done. Why it was done. Yeah. yeah exactly. The whole reasoning behind it, any conversation, backstory, so, whatever, you can go back and just look at the issue Yep. Yeah. or, you know, the pull request and see it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so this is kind of, so this is this, this first episode of this, of, of the stream, I kind of wanted just kind of level set of what we're doing. Um, you know, what, what, what I want to do with this, with this stream is mm -hmm. kind of having like an office hours, but first I kind of wanted to level set and make sure we all kind of just talk in the same language. Right. So like what, what GetOps is, it's, it's nothing, um, nothing fancy. It's not a specific tool. It's just a set of practices. Right. And then right. In, in other episodes, we'll dive deep into specific topics. Um, I think it's worth it to dive into specific top, topics. I think secret management is like the biggest one I always get mm -hmm. asked about. So I think my next episode will be that or, episode after that um i mean there's kind of like two ways you can go about it. you can talk about vault you can talk about steel secrets you yeah, could yeah. do yeah i mean you know there's a lot of different ways you could do was, that. Yeah, so yeah. um so yeah so I, I hope um you know i hope to see all of you um not next week but the week after maybe i'll increase the cadence if there's enough interest in it right. um you know increase the cadence and we'll, we'll have um i already have a, a few a few guests lined up a few maybe special guests may be able to come on wow we hope Fancy. so um yeah, so <laughs> we'll, we'll get we'll get fancy with this channel as as, as much as uh, as much as possible. So um, so yeah, so I don't have anything else. There's anything, no, you know, this was a great show. I I mean, you know, for the first time out, I think we did a good job, man. Thank yeah. thank you for for coming up with the idea for the show and for yeah, coming no, on and you. sharing your knowledge. You're right, like, and thank thank you out there for joining us, everyone. Um, tomorrow we have on the channel. Not much because it's Friday. Uh, yeah. That's right. It's Friday. Uh, <laughs> no one yeah. works on Friday, though. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> but we have uh, an OpenShift Commons briefing with a good friend of mine from GitHub, uh, Sasha oh, cool. Rosenbaum. So she'll be on the channel okay. tomorrow at yeah. noon. Nice. Uh, so it'll be cool to have her on. But yeah, it's it's Friday. We kind of take it as a down day. It's actually a day I get work done. Uh, <laughs> Same here. It's just I actually get do stuff right. instead of just being yeah. in meetings all day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not, <laughs> you know, like yesterday, for example, I did. What was it? Five hours of live streaming and two hours of meetings. Right. Like that's you got to have a day somewhere. Yeah. You got yeah, to have, yeah, have a day yeah. somewhere where you can actually do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Friday is kind of that day for us. And plus, you know, it just works well with viewership and everything else. Right. Like, to be honest with you, not a lot of people tune in on Fridays. So, yeah, yeah. Eh. So, but which tomorrow I don't, I don't, definitely I want yeah. you to tune in because that talk at noon tomorrow Eastern time will be uh, talking about how you create allyship within your organization. That's and, really cool, and that's like a big, big, big part of that, doing also, GetOps. Yeah, I'll say <laughs> right? that's, a, that's like, like the, the foundation of doing you've GetOps. You've got to have right? commun good communications. You know, trust, uh, assuming positive intent. All those things are important. Yeah. So well, tune I in tomorrow. Say, yeah. I always say the um, in in problem solving the issue is always layer eight in the OSI model, which is people, yeah, people. right? Layer eight is people, <laughs> <laughs> so that's exactly. usually where the problem is. So yeah, so definitely tune in tomorrow. It'll be great. All right, awesome. Thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, if you have any questions, any concerns, just let us know. You can always find me on uh, Twitter at Chris Short, and subscribe to the calendar. If you want to, you know, check us out in the future, we appreciate it. Have a good one out there. Yep. Thanks to everyone.